In this video, we're going to learn about reflections over lines in the coordinate plane. So first of all, line reflection is a transformation that's flipping an object over a given line of reflection. So remember that reflections are opposite isometries. Opposite isometries meaning that the orientation is going to change. So this means um, the order of the letters changes. And then isometry, remember, means that it's going to have the same shape and size. So when we talk about a reflection, it'll always flip the order of the letters, but it'll stay the same shape and size, the figure that you're, wrote, or that you're reflecting. Um, so then the next idea here is that the distance from any point of the pre-image, the line of reflection is the same as the distance from its corresponding point of the image, the line of reflection. So that's pretty wordy, but basically what it means is if I have this right here as my line of reflection, and this is point A, what I'm going to do is I'm going to count that distance to the line, and that's the same distance on the other side to get the new point A prime. So the distance to the line of reflection is the same from the line of reflection to the image. So that'll always stay the same. Um, notice right here it says under a reflection, not all points in the figure travel the same distance. Meaning, if I was going to reflect a triangle or a line segment, let's say I have line segment AB, and now I talk about point B. Point B is closer to the line of reflection, which means it's going to be closer when you go from it, when you reflect it, when you go from the line of reflection. So that distance, B prime, is still going to be closer to the line than A prime was because B was closer um, than A was. So that distance between these points will be the same to the line of reflection, but overall um, each of the points doesn't necessarily follow that same distance. So the other idea here says um, if a point is on the line of reflection, that means that that point will remain invariant. So that's a key word that we um, keep seeing. Invariant means it's going to remain the same. So what that means is if I have a point A on the line of reflection, there's nowhere for me to go to count to the line of reflection because it's on there. So that means that's just going to stay in place. So whenever you have a, a point that's on the line of reflection, it's just going to be kind of like locked in place and everything else will move because there's no number of units to travel to get to the line, so you don't need to go any no number of units from the line, so it just stays in place. Um, and then we look at now actually talking about reflecting on a graph. So one thing you want to know is the notation here. So lowercase r stands for reflection. It's going to be important that you keep um, using a lowercase r for reflections because capital R's are going to be for rotations. So lowercase r stands for reflection, and then you're always going to have a line, so it's going to tell you an equation or it's going to tell you a specific line that you're reflecting over. So if we're talking about on the um, coordinate plane, you're going to be given an equation or something like the x-axis or y-axis. So that's the line that you reflect over. So if we look at the first two here, I'm reflecting over the x and y-axis. For these, I'm going to recommend that you always do these graphically. Um, so these should be done on a graph. So let's say do on graph. Um, and what you're going to do, so let's just kind of sketch out a picture here because I think that'll be the easiest way to kind of talk about it. If I'm reflecting over the x-axis, so let's say I start with some point, let's just say it's 2, comma, 3. So if I start with a point 2, comma, 3, and I want to reflect that over the x-axis, what you need to do is you need to count that distance to get to the line of reflection. So I had to travel three units to get to the line. So that means I have to go three more units, and that'll be A prime. So A prime will be 2 comma negative 3, and my original point was 2 comma 3. So the number of units to get to the line of reflection, that's how far I have to travel. Because remember, the line of reflection is really the perpendicular bisector to that segment. So you always need to make sure that you count perpendicularly to the line of reflection and also make it so that it's the, the line of reflection splits that segment between A and A prime into two equal parts. So we count perpendicularly and we count so that it's the same distance. So that's really the process. Now you might notice there's a rule here that really what happened was the Y values were negated. 
So you could, um, I recommend doing x and y axis, reflecting over those on a graph. But if you look, really the rule that happened here is I just negated my y values. x values stay the same, but the y values get switched. So if we kind of look at now reflection over the y axis, well, let's start with a point again. So x and y. So let's say I start with 1, 2. So here's a, 1, 2. And if I want to reflect that over the y-axis, that means now it's going to come to the left because I need to go over that. So I count one unit, which means I need to travel one more unit. So it's going to be at negative 1. So this is going to be my a prime. So a prime, I'll just write it off to the side here, would be negative 1, 2. So however far it takes me to get to the line, that's how far I travel from the line of reflection. Notice really what happened was the x values get negated. So you could say, um, do this on a graph, but also you are just really negating your x values when you're reflecting over the y. So just the main thing is keep always counting perpendicular to that line of reflection and always counting the same distance. However far it takes you to get to it, that's how far you're going to travel. And now the last two, um, I would highly recommend just using the rule for these. Um, so I'm going to say use rule. Um, because for these, you can do them on a graph, but if you remember the line y equals x, that is actually going to be, so if I just kind of sketch a picture, that is actually going to have a y-intercept of 0 and a slope of 1. So it's going to look like a diagonal line um, going through the origin and going up 1 over 1. So if you imagine reflecting over this, remember when you reflect, you always have to reflect perpendicular to that line. That's going to be a little bit more challenging because you can't, um, you you can't really count diagonally on a graph. I mean, it is possible for this to use the diagonals to count, but it, the diagonals don't equal 1, so it's a little bit trickier when you're counting. Um, so for this, I would just remember the rule is just switching your x and y. So let me give you an example so you can kind of see what that looks like. So if we start with, let's just say, 3, negative 2, and we're going to do a reflection, so lowercase r, over the line y equals x, when you actually switch these coordinates, you're literally just switching the order. So I'm going to take my y, that's going to become x, and my x value becomes my y. So that would be the answer. So I literally just switch them, and then I could just plot it. If I want to reflect over the line y equals negative x, well, that line looks similar to the last one, but it has a negative slope. So that means the line's going to go through the origin but it has a negative slope, so this is y equals negative x. So again, it's a diagonal line, so counting perpendicularly to that, you're actually counting diagonally, which is difficult to do on a graph. So for this, again, I would just recommend knowing the rule. So you're going to switch x and y, but then you're also going to switch their sign. So you're going to flip it and you're going to negate. So looking at, let's just say that last example, 3, negative 2, what's going to happen when we do a reflection over y equals negative x is we're going to switch the order, but we're going to also negate. So the 2 is going to come in front, but it's going to become positive. The 3 is going to go at the end, and it's going to become negative. So that's kind of the idea for those. So I would just know the rules for those ones. And then for the last ones here, these ones, when you're reflecting over other lines, you want to look at a graph for these. So when you're reflecting over horizontal or vertical lines that are not the x and y axis, I would recommend doing these on the graph. So for this one, y equals 3, we're going to start by graphing that. So we're going to reflect over this line. Remember, y equals is a horizontal line going through 3. So here's y equals 3. So graph that. We're going to label it. Let me get my x and y axis labeled as well. And we're starting with the point 3, negative 5. So 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to label that A. And we're going to reflect over the line y equals 3. So if I'm going to reflect over that line, what I need to do is I need to make sure that the distance from the pre-image to the line of reflection is the same as 
from the line of reflection to the image. So, and I'm always going to count perpendicularly. So since this is a horizontal line, when I count, I'm going to count vertical to that. So I'm going to start at A and I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8, so that means I need to travel 8 more. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's going off 1. So this is going to be 3, comma, and I believe it's 11, but let's just double check. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 3, comma, 11. And then we're going to do the same thing for the other one. We're going to reflect B, but now it's going to be over the line X equals negative 5. So X equals is a vertical line passing through the X value of 5, negative 5. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Draw my vertical line through that. Label that line. And then I'm going to plot my point. So negative 2, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So here's B. And now I'm going to reflect over this line. So I'm going to count from that point. It needs to come horizontally over the line. So remember, it's a vertical line, so I'm counting perpendicularly, and I'm repeating the distance. So 1, 2, 3. Go 3 more. 1, 2, 3. So there's B prime. So B prime is going to be at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So negative 8, comma, 5. And that's it. So really, for reflections, your best bet is to do them on a graph um, and always count so that you're perpendicular to the line of reflection. Make sure the points come up over the line with the exception of the points being on the line to start. Um, and always make sure that the distance from the pre-image to the line is the same as from the line to the image point. And then the exceptions to doing things graphically are whenever you're reflecting over y equals x or y equals negative x, you're going to want to use your um, reflection rules for that. Otherwise, you can graph, but you have to count like corners to corners, um, which can be a little bit trickier, and most people prefer just knowing the rule. So I would just know the rule for that. So go ahead and try the check your understanding problems, and we will talk about those in class tomorrow.